And now to Donald Trump potentially undermining his own claims of innocence by using language that is more commonly associated with crime bosses and mob movies. Today, NBC confirming another top Trump figure struck a deal with the feds, the Trump Organization's CFO getting immunity in the Cohen probe. It's part of a pattern of Trump associates spilling the beans. This just a day after Trump blasted what he calls flippers. It's this whole thing about uh, flipping, they call it. I know all about flipping for 30, 40 years. I've been watching flippers. It almost ought to be outlawed. It's not fair. I've had many friends involved in this stuff. It's called flipping, and it almost ought to be illegal. All right, so in recent days, Trump has been saying that the White House counsel isn't a rat. He's been praising Paul Manafort because he, quote, refused to break and blasting Jeff Sessions for failing to match Trump's, quote, loyalty. It's a mindset not often found in the White House, but in films like this. Don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. And you learn the two greatest things in life. Never rat on your friends and always keep your mouth shut. All our people are businessmen. Their loyalty is based on that. One thing I learned from Pop was to try to think as people around you think. All right, joining me now is NBC News analyst Howard Feynman, and back with me once again, Seth Waxman, who spent eight years prosecuting organized crime figures like some of those that we saw portrayed on TV. Uh, Seth, let me begin with you. Uh, you've been in this position before. Is the way Trump acting a sign that he feels backed into a corner, the language, the posturing, is it defensive in nature? Of course it is. It is exactly that. You know, I, when I was a federal prosecutor, I used to sit on wiretaps for weeks or months. And this is the kind of language that hardened criminals would use. You know, head kingpins and drug dealers. You know, who's flipping? Who do we who do we want to go after? Who's on our side? I mean, listening to this is like listening to Tony Soprano. You know, this is really shocking to me, this kind of language. I, you know, I don't want to go too far, but you know, Washington, Lincoln, Jefferson, they might be rolling over in their grave to think that a president of the United States is criticizing criticizing people who own responsibility, plead guilty, and decide to change their life, but yet, you know, standing by the person who isn't going to be a rat. It's really, really upsetting. It, Howard, it's one thing for the president to kind of use this language among his own inner circle in private, but he's using this language open in public to demean, uh, to distance himself from, to, in interviews, in an official capacity. What are your thoughts about the way Donald Trump is talking like a mob boss? Well, he wants to do it publicly because this is the image he wants to project. He wants to be known as the mob boss in the White House. Uh, that's his whole, the whole manner of his upbringing, everything he was steeped in New York in the construction business and in dealing with uh, people there, the way he's raised money, including from people who are reputed to be in the Russian mob, et cetera. Uh, he was coming into his own in New York and beginning in, in the business right around the time the Godfather movies were were uh, were in the in the theaters in seventy two and seventy four and that's how he has consciously shaped himself. It's how he grew up in New York. It's what he thinks power is supposed to look like. So he's not going to hide it at all. He's going to advertise it. He also thinks that public threats are the way to go. In, in a way, he's like a bad mob boss because the mob bosses didn't do it in public. He's playing that role on television and playing it in the White House and playing it the way he thinks power is supposed to look. Hey, do you think That's it's going to Do you think, Howard, that it undermines him in the long run, undermines any chance he's got in the long run? Well, one would think so. Uh, but he's played. It's interesting because he, the longer he goes and the more he gets backed into a corner legally, the more he's behaving that way. He has some kind of faith that that sells to the people who care about him most. It may, but in the process, he's going to lose the perimeter of whatever support he has. Those suburban voters, the people who believe in the idea of decency and the rule of law, ultimately are going to recoil. Maybe not now, but as soon as the report comes out and as soon as other facts are known, and I think somewhere in his mind, he has that sense, uh, and he's, uh, stare, he's preparing himself for that day. Seth, you brought up the issue that you've sat in on many wiretaps over your career. career. Excuse me. Listen to the type of people that Trump surrounds himself with, because I'm going to play you this Michael Cohen talking to a reporter in 2015. I know exactly who you are, and I know exactly what you do, and I know exactly the 
the story you plan on writing. So I'm warning you, tread very lightly, because what I'm going to do to you is going to be... What, what do you make of that language, Seth? What do you make of that threatening tone? This was one of the president's lawyers, one of his fixers, so to speak, a part of his inner circle. Yeah, that's the true Michael Cohen. I mean, I understand Lanny Davis now is coming out and saying, uh, you know, Mr. Cohen has found religion or is ba back to his family or is putting country first. Look, I learned one thing as a federal prosecutor. People that are in the crosshairs of federal law enforcement care about one thing and one thing only. It is themselves. You know, so I don't believe for a minute that he has now found his country. He has found himself in a corner and he's doing everything that he can to help himself. That what you heard on the tape, that is the true Michael Cohen. Cohen, and when he was still a member of the conspiracy, assuming it, it existed. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here, or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that.